Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome my colleague, Elaine Cochum. So, Elaine. Thank you, John. To show how prescient we are here, I noted today, actually John noted today, that we have a, an article in Jane's Defense Weekly on um, a, the Air Force uh, unveiling its first handheld laser weapon. And so it, it sort of demonstrates that there are these issues out there. Um, and so without further ado, I will introduce our speaker. Uh, Dr. J. Douglas Beeson is a um, retired Air Force colonel uh, and is a key architect and leaning expert in directed energy research for the past 26 years. He holds a PhD in laser technology physics and he served in the White House working for President's science advisor in both the Clinton and Bush administrations. Today he is on the uh, board of directors of the Directed Energy Professional Society and at Los Alamos National Laboratory he is the director of um, threat reduction. Dr. Beeson is also the author of 12 books, uh, including uh, some science fiction works. And um, he has over 100 scholarly papers and other works. And he's also a fellow of the prestigious American Physical Society. Dr. Beeson. Thank you. Well, thank you for uh, inviting me. It's, uh, uh, thank you for mentioning the, uh, the novels. I was at a uh, government agency this morning. And when they learned that I was going to be giving a talk today, about my newest book, uh, one of the young ladies said, well, you, you write fiction, don't you? <laughs> and they thought that this was a uh, fiction novel. Some people, uh, I, I think, do, and that's what I hope to dispel uh, today. But first of all, the uh, obligatory uh, disclaimer, uh, this talk, uh, the views in this talk are entirely my own. Uh, they're not to any way represent those of Los Alamos National Laboratory, Department of Defense, or Department of uh, Energy. And with that, I'll launch right into it with the statement that um, Hundreds, of, or if not thousands, of lives could have been saved in Iraq if science and technology had been appropriately applied and used. So there's the statement. What do I mean by that? Well, if we were to have a, a program of science and technology that could produce a weapon with certain characteristics, what type of characteristics would this weapon have? Well, the first characteristic that I would want as a warfighter would be that it would be infinitely precise. That is, that you could focus it down so that uh, there would be little or zero collateral damage. And in fact, if you were to have such a weapon, as it would turn out, and I'll give you some attributes of such a weapon later, if it was infinitely precise and you could focus it down to be infinitely precise, that would mean that it would be inherently defensive. That is, you couldn't spread it out as, as you could a typical weapon of mass destruction. And I'll go into some characteristics of uh, what I mean then by being infinitely precise. The second characteristic is that I would want it to be infinitely fast. That is, I would want it to be able to deposit its effect, its weapon effect, in a action that is faster than the blink of an eye. Uh, and in fact, such a technology exists along with infinitely fast precision or infinitely precise uh, application that you have a near infinitely fast application of force. In fact, at the speed of light, 186,000 miles a second, which can really, uh, which really means a way for us as humans to think about this, as uh, encircling the Earth more than seven times in less than a second. That's how fast light travels. So the third characteristic, along with infinitely fast and being infinitely precise, would be able to what I call give you the opportunity to dial an effect. That is, currently right now, the only way that we have to apply force is a binary system, a zero, one. Either you apply force or you don't. And the effects are usually binary, too. You can either shout at somebody, that is, you don't apply force, or you shoot them. You can kill them. By dialing an effect, it gives the warfighter a means now to have a graduated effect to be, to be able to do everything from denying an adversary uh, access to either their, uh, their own weapon system, to a, uh, to a space, to be able to destroy that adversary, or be able to upset that adversary, to give the warfighter the opportunity to be able to determine what situation are they in, what type of effect do I want to deliver. Well, as it turns out, this type of technology does exist. And then the auspice, under the auspices of, and you've probably guessed it, directed energy. And that's what I'll be talking about today. 
So the good news is, is that directed energy exists. Directed energy is being tested. And within a few years, direct of capabilities that exist right now, you have your satellites, which do tremendous work for us. They're geosynchronous and have other types of relationships to the Earth. But those things are only available when they pass during that, over that particular piece of uh, terrain or for a particular mission. These UAVs at these high altitudes can act in a certain degree with a degree of autonomy because they're outside of the air, the ground-to-air threats that might exist with some of our future competitors. And they're flexible. I mean, they've got a tremendous look-down angle. They can cover an incredible amount of space. The amount of data that they can suck up is incredible. And so I would say the one downside is you can get into what's called data overload, but that can be addressed through and a bunch of software programs and great analysts on the ground. And I know that they've been testing one of these things fueled with hydrogen. What does that mean in terms of capability? Well, first of all, it's green. and Liquid hydrogen um, helps in that particular instance and in that it doesn't uh, emit any pollutants. Um, but it's also got a long track record. You know, liquid hydrogen has been used in NASA for the shuttle program since the 70s. So it's got a long track record. It works extremely well. And it's plentiful. It can be used, and in this form, it provides a great capability. You know, these, these high-altitude UAVs, these drones, can, in some cases, can stay at altitude for five to seven days, wow. clearly exceeding their current capabilities. The Free Electron Laser FEL Weapon Operating at the speed of light, the FEL will be able to detect threats. An incoming missile won't outrun it, outmaneuver it, or escape it. It will defend the fleet of the future, capable of destroying multiple incoming weapons simultaneously. The Free Electron Laser is the future of Navy ship protection, and the Office of Naval Research is supporting the technology to build it right now. In order to make the technology leap that FEL required, ONR engaged the finest Department of Energy Laboratories particle accelerator science had to offer. We have experts that know different pieces and parts of this system. For instance, we have injector experts for the free electron laser. We have accelerator experts. We have electron beam dynamics experts. We have photon optics experts for the, for the free electron laser. And all of them are, are, are based in, in laboratories or universities or industrial settings. The free electron laser will sit in standby mode aboard ship, drawing a small amount of power. Under a threat situation, the ship will bring it up to ready mode. The FEL will have a beam director and a sensor system, much in the manner of other weapon systems aboard ship, which would be interfaced to the FEL. And if those systems detected an incoming threat, say a cruise missile coming in, it could turn on the free electron laser up to very high average power in a short length of time and using a combination of radar and optical techniques, lock on to that incoming missile and destroy it. The future of fleet protection will depend on weapon systems like FEL. Uh, you have to have an effective weapon which operates at the speed of light uh, if you want to have any chance of uh, dealing with this threat. Realizing the potential of a tunable laser ship defense weapon, ONR brought together the finest minds in the field of laser accelerator technology to bring the futuristic FEL into the hands of the next generation sailor. This is just the kind of challenge that ONR excels in solving. The free electron laser has a lot of very good attributes that I described. It's very reliable um, and it's tunable. The wavelengths can be tuned to different wavelengths and designable to different wavelength ranges. So big applications, the free electron laser looks very good. FEL offers multiple advantages to the future sailor and the ship. Today, with the advances we just demonstrated in the continuous wave free, uh, normal conducting injector, we were able to design this FEL amplifier and take it to the next level of performance, namely continuous power of 100 kilowatts over a long time. We don't have to require any time in between the shots. Free electron lasers have run 24 hours a day for a month at a time, uh, with 98% uptime during that time. 
So they have the potential of being very reliable. Without the uh, ONR support uh, over the long period of time, without that, this technology wouldn't be here today, uh, and the Navy probably would not have a, a viable program to move forward. Great strides have been made in accelerator technology development through FEL research. We're ready to embark upon a program to produce 100 kilowatts in the system. Not only will the FEL offer a futuristic defense for the Navy, it will free the Navy from the logistics trail that supports present-day weaponry. Future benefits from FEL technology development go way beyond Navy applications. Presently, the U.S. is the world leader in free electron laser development and the rest of the world is working to catch up to what is being done in the U.S. on free electron laser development. And so a tremendous amount has been done in improving the technology to make it possible, understanding the physics, and then looking for actual uses of the light that comes out the end. From ONR and Department of Energy Labs, the plan is to transition the FEL technology to industry. Over the next few years, we look toward industry to take on the uh, job of building the next higher power FEL, showing good progress on the path toward what we need to be installed on the ship, uh, as well as acquire the experience and background they need in order to do the, the future job of actually packaging it as a practical system uh, so that it could automatically operate uh, on a shipboard environment by a sailors with a fairly modest amount of training. The future for the free electron laser uh, for the Navy uh, looks very bright. We are winning the battles of the future in the laboratories of today. And what that means is if we do the investments now, we do the science, we do the engineering, then our future is secure. ONR recently awarded a contract to Boeing to build the next generation free electron laser to go from the current 14 kilowatt FEL capability to a 100 kilowatt FEL. The benefits definitely are greater than the investments that we're putting in today for our future armed forces. Introducing Trophy, Raphael's proven active protection system. Combining smart detection and advanced hard kill technologies, Trophy creates an impenetrable shield around fighting vehicles. As rockets or missiles enter Trophy's radar layer, the system detects, tracks, and classifies them, activating its hard kill mechanism only if the vehicle is about to be hit. Trophy neutralizes what were once fatal threats, leaving them in harmless scattered pieces or detonating them in midair with almost no residual effect. As seen in this live field test, Trophy maintains full kill performance even while on the move. Providing 360 degree protection with high elevation coverage, Trophy counters simultaneous missile attack from either one or more directions. The system's ability to neutralize weapons fired from very short range makes it highly effective both on open terrain and in urban arenas. Ready for integration to combat ATRs and ATGMs, Trophy is currently in advanced development against kinetic energy projectiles as seen in this field test. Trophy was designed for current as well as future combat systems, increasing platform protection while reducing vehicle weight. Developed in Raphael's advanced laboratories, Trophy has been proved during rigorous end-to-end -end field testing. Because the system neutralizes ATRs and some other missiles without detonation, soldiers in close proximity of engagement would rarely incur injury. In the case of missile detonation, field tests showed that Trophy's probability of causing injury to flanking infantry or platform crews is on average less than 1%. Trophy was developed according to the IDF's requirements. The Ground Forces Command intends to integrate Trophy on its Merkava Mark IV main battle tank and plans to integrate it on lighter vehicles in the future.